<clears throat> all right hey guys just a little, a little after 9 30 on the 17th of february for the pm edition of low hill news let's start with the crypto market caps like we always do of course on top bitcoin 52,000. we talked about that by saying how it would probably stay above 50 in the next few days and uh took a couple days off and of course here we are over 50 grand ethereum hanging around just under two grand Tether in third place at a dollar. Polka dot, thirty-one point ninety-five. Let's see, Cardano hanging around just under a dollar point ninety-two. Binance Coin, hundred sixty-nine. Nice. XRP, fifty-four cents, just about fifty-five cents. Litecoin in an all-time high district at two hundred thirty-four dollars. Bitcoin Cash at seven twenty-two. Chainlink at hanging in there at three three twenty-five. Not super threatened on the market cap, but all right. Let's look at the top twenty-four movers, top twenty-four hours. Um, I O S T don't know anything about it. Horizon don't know anything. B N T, Cake, and B N B, B N T then B N B. I heard about a Mars coin somewhere on the news, but I don't like see that anywhere on there. <coughs> so anyway. That's Elon Musk, like new Dogecoin or something. All right, let's look at the last 12 hours or so. Not a ton of changes, but pretty solid support. I mean, where do we have to go back to find any resistance? And how long did we even stay in the resistance? You know, pretty good looking. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we're in the cloud. We could be bouncing out right now. And let's go ahead and look at a little bit more of the indicators. Conversion line's actually under the baseline, which actually does usually mean it's going to drop. And there is a little bit of forming resistance. And it's hard to even see what the lagging indicator is doing, but it is pointed down. So the Ichimoku cloud actually kind of looks... Um, I suggest we're going to bounce down a little bit. And if we turn off all these indicators and just kind of look at where we're at in the scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, like, broke through 50, didn't quite bounce off 50, didn't quite hit 53, and have just sort of been hovering. Yeah, I would figure we'll tumble a little bit. We tumble under 50? Uh, probably. But I bet you would not... I bet you we don't go under 45. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Hold it. Um, yeah, I bet you we don't go under 45. So, we'll see. Let's talk later. Not too much in the news. But something that seems kind of obvious. Some dude from some place, uh, you know, says that Bitcoin mania is not a fad. People are piling on the train. And that's a pretty good analogy. Um... Let's see, prominent wealth manager from L.A. Well, that's a big town. I've heard of that place. Uh, larger future price. PayPal. So here we go. PayPal Square, NVIDIA, Tesla, IBM, Visa, MasterCard. None of these people, I'm not, now I'm done quoting him. None of these people were around in 2017. See, here, here's the 2017 part. None of those people were around when Bitcoin hit 20,000 and then, uh, you know, retracted. Um... It was all the speculators, like really early speculators, you know, before us even. And so um, now that the corporate people are here, now that like you can buy it on PayPal and people feel like, well, I'll buy Bitcoin if there's a customer service process like PayPal, I can get it through, stuff like that. Um, you know, I feel like that's going to put in a user base that's going to support a price that's not going to go back down at the tens of thousands, the twenties of thousands. I think those prices are long gone, honestly, um, especially long term. So yeah, I think you could add another digit, a whole other zero to Bitcoin, and that would be the price range to, uh, where it finally settles in the long run, at least, um, if not more than that, is my guess. This is not financial advice, dude. Old Todd don't know. Um, arcade Classic Street Fighter 2. I think every, well, everyone my age can remember, uh, launches NFTs on the Wax blockchain. 
Wax blockchain. I don't know much much about Wax. But I'm thinking of doing a video about this kind of thing. Because I'm not really sure what this is exactly. Um, <clears throat> I just took a peek at it. And it's like uh, packs of trading cards. Unpacking process that simulates opening physical trading card pack. So um, NFTs I talked about uh, last episode. Sorry. It is the late night show. They're non-fungible tokens, which means that, like, they're unique items. Um, so there's either, like, I'm not sure if there's one of each of these cards. It's probably more like a few hundred of each one or something like that. You know, how baseball cards are. A few hundred, a few thousand, depending on the player, depending on stuff. And you open the packs and you get, like, various rarities, various levels of rarities in the cards. And that's cool. So that's interesting. And then the packs of unsold or sorry, unopened, I should say, uh, resell pretty high, obviously, because who knows what's in them and all. Um, yeah, so that's cool. So, that's cool. That's what they look like. I'm pretty interested in that, so maybe I'll make a video about that later. Um, Cardado. Whew. Let's just get this done and get out of here, man. Old man's Todd is yawning. Cardano may, uh, Mary Hardfork, tentatively scheduled March 1st. My wedding anniversary, huh? Okay. Ethereum, allow negative tokens. This is the one that allows uh, or, uh, Cardano to do that purpose, to do that function as well. Um, yeah, and I guess it's coming. It's not as big of a deal to hard fork, I think, this coin than it is the proof of work coins because you don't have to worry about certain pools like not jumping on board and having split chains and stuff like that, like Ethereum Classic. Um, like a chain that doesn't go away or anything else. So, you know, cool. Good for Cardano. Just a f couple weeks away, we're going to get uh, Ethereum-like uh, coins on there. So, All right, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you for stopping in, and uh, take it easy tonight.